the family court system has brought me here to you to tell you that there's only one way that we're going to stop hundreds of thousands of children from dealing with the same nonsense that I had to deal with. Though the family courts claim to be out for the best interest of the children, I think that we all know differently. Yeah. Uh, right. In my eyes, the best interest of the children is equal parenting, 50-50 visitation. There is no other way for a child to grow up happy at all. I believe that if we do a 50-50 visitation, the courts will have no choice but to become uninvolved. They won't be able to be involved because right. we'll be taking care of it ourselves. Thank you. Children want and need both of their parents, and as the daughter of fallen hero Wilbur Street, I wish that my parents had split custody equally. Um, had they put aside their own pain and hatred and decided that, you know, we're going to look out for the best interest of Kim here, I think that my life probably would have been a lot more ideal, especially my childhood. Uh, Divorce is hard enough without a child having to deal with hearing their mother and father fight over money and who's going to have them and watching their father get arrested for non-payment of child support. My father always took care of me when I was with him and therefore I didn't understand why he had to pay $682.50 a month for me in child support every single month of my life until I graduated college. Uh, if more parents could take their children financially, uh, take care of their children financially while they had visitation, I'm sure that the transition from marriage to divorce would be a lot smoother for everybody. The judges and lawyers seem to look at people as ATMs rather than as people who have real emotions. Uh, rather than pushing the love of their child and, and Reminding them that the person that you're fighting now in court is the person that you loved a couple of years ago That you wanted to spend the rest of your life with and instead they use the hatred that the, per the people have for each other and push them against each other and It's obvious that the best interest of the child is thrown aside as the lawyers build grow and grow and grow and in my case my mother and father spent thousands of dollars on attorneys, and I ended up with no college fund as a result. Uh, there was just nothing left after the attorney took it all. My dad ended up spending a ridiculous amount of money every month, and he did it basically just to avoid spending any more money on an attorney because he couldn't take it anymore. Eventually, my father ended up getting arrested and beaten by the Monmouth County Sheriff's who claimed that he owed child support. I went with him to speak to a woman and he proved to her that not only had he been ch paying child support, but that he was owed child support. That he had been paying my medical bills and my mother hadn't paid a cent. That he had bought me glasses, braces, uh, you name it. My father was there for me to do it for me. And my mom just didn't find any interest in things like that. After they beat him up, they charged him, they charged him, that's pretty funny actually, uh, with assaulting a police officer and uh, resisting arrest. He then had to fight off five years of jail time and he became unemployed. And now he actually wasn't paying child support because not only was he unemployed, he was not able to get a job because he had Monmouth County probation on his, uh, on his record. Nobody wants anybody with Monmouth County probation on there. Uh, as I was taken away from my father my sophomore year of high school, and I kind of sat back and watched as my father's life started to decay. While I was dealing with my own depression, I watched him fight off charges and get thrown in jail. My stepmother divorced him for a divorce attorney, ironically enough, and he taught her how to manipulate the system. He taught her that if she said that he beat her, 
then she could say that he's a threat to the children and he can't have them, and that means more money for her. Sure. Well, she ended up paying alimony. My dad ended up moving into a single room apartment and living by himself with mounds of paperwork around him. And uh, he was trying to fight off my stepmother's false accusations and things like that. She claimed that he threw her, he grabbed her by the wrist and threw her across the room onto the waterbed which is absolutely impossible because my father had just been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and had a specialist prove that he could not lift more than five pounds. Uh, she continued with the, with the allegations and continued saying that he was a bad parent and that he couldn't see his kids. So we got supervised visitation on Sundays with Julia and Nicholas and I finally went to the courts and said this is enough. It's been two years since I've seen my father. I'm going to see my father, whether you like it or not, because he's dying. I got it. Thank you. I finally was allowed to see my father on Sundays. And I would go there and we would talk about what was going on with the system. And he was obviously angered. Um, he told me that he was going to dedicate his every waking moment in the next two to five years that he had of life to making sure that neither Julia, Nicholas, or I had to deal with any of this ever again. And he fought and he got 60 fathers released from jail on Father's Day. He, uh, he we went to see Brian Armstrong in New Hampshire, uh, well, his family, because Brian had been killed in the jails. And I realized that my father was passionate and dedicated, and I was turned on to the cause through him. The last time I spent alone with my father was the day that he was released from jail. He, uh, we had a great time, but it was broken up by the reality of the fact that my dad was going to die. And Judge Fred Kaiser out of Middlesex County, New Jersey, told my father to shut up and had him remanded to jail. If you ever saw my father when, right before he died, he was a walking skeleton. The man looked like the living dead. I loved him, but he was really sick at the end of his life. And any man that could possibly put my father in jail looking like that obviously has no heart or any care for the child's interest. I've been flooded with emails um, since my dad died. He was supposed to come and give me his last $200. And he never showed up. Instead, my grandfather found him the next day in his apartment. Uh, many people flooded me with emails and I finally got a call from William Wagner. And we, I did an interview with him along with my father's interview. And it's now posted on the internet on secondthought.tv. And he is backing me now so that I can go out and lobby to different states and try to put an end to this corruption. I'm, I'm taking the torch from where my dad left off. All right. In conclusion, I just want to say that it's events like these and politicians like Mr. Klein that give me hope, that keep me going. I'm speaking on behalf of all children because I needed my mom and dad and I was denied. I'm living on welfare now in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It, it's real. <laughs> there's, no more, there's no more sugar coated anything for me. Ever since my dad died, every, I got kicked out of my mom's house. She told me she didn't want to be my mom anymore. No more paycheck coming in for me. And uh, she considers me to be a full-time job and a hassle rather than uh, as her loving, caring daughter. And my dad made me a promise when he was two years old that he would always take care of me. And I know that he's still taking care of me to this day. I know that he's smiling down on all of us right now and thanking each and every one of you for listening to what I have to say and making sure that his life and death don't go in vain. This has to stop. Thank you.